Hello. Welcome back. I'm doing more drafting today. We're drafting. I'm, uh... <laughs> been in a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a rut lately. We'll see if we're, we're at that stage of the format. Um, for me, at least, you know, we're past the, uh, the easy exploitable days where, you know, you can just kind of draft the same deck every time. I might do really well with it. And we're in sort of that awkward rediscovery phase where, um, you sort of got to refigure out what's, you know, good, you know, things are, you know, moving around, things are still up in the air. Um, so yeah, it's always, always the most difficult part of the format for me personally, is, uh, figuring out, you know, where you're at, uh, in this, in these type of spots. But, uh, today we're going to try, um, we're going to see, see how things are going. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we're, that's what's going on here. All right, so it begins. All right, we're gonna start this with an interesting pick. I'm probably gonna take Deep Cavern Bat. It's the best card. Other alternatives include like Miner's Guidewing because it's in a better color and Atali's Favor, but I think I'm gonna just take the Deep Cavern Bat. It's a good card. Um, really strong, good reason to be playing black. Um, this this growing rights of whatever, in, it, it will, yeah, can't pronounce it, uh, is a, uh, it, it's just like, I don't know. It's not super impressive. Um, yeah, so it's, that's where we're starting. Deep Cavern Bat Gaming. Ooh, okay. So now now the... <laughs> now the real ones amongst us need to know. Do I think I can wheel this Echoing Deeps? Because, man, I could just take Cave in. And just immediately go for the, the Cave mindset. Oh man, I could also take Lodestone Needle though, and Lodestone Needle's really, really good. Cave in may wheel. It probably won't, because um, he's in the, the draft pod. I don't think this is wheeling. Um, so, it's either it's either try to do the cave thing, which would be kind of fun, and I've done it like three times though. <laughs> but it's been successful both of the times that I've done it. And it would be interesting. The problem is, like, with Deep Cavern Bat, it specifically is like terrible. Ah, you know what? Let's take let's take the cave in. Let's let's do it. Let's do the thing. Let's see if it's open. If it's open, we'll try it. We'll try it out again. Cave deck. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> absolute disaster. If this this doesn't work out, no, it's not an absolute disaster. We're missing a lodestone needle and like, you know. Am I am I gonna have regrets? Yeah, pr probably. There's probably gonna be like next pick, like busted blue card, and I'm gonna be like crying myself to sleep, and it's gonna be an absolute nightmare, you know, all that all that good stuff. And I have it's not like I haven't drafted. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> okay, fine, okay, sure. I mean, if I have if I have to, okay, fine, fine. <laughs> We'll run it back. We'll run it back. Okay, we're running it back. Uh, oh no. What if I? Okay, so this card's terrible. But what if it wasn't? I kind of want to take Echo of Dusk. This pack isn't very good. I'm gonna just take the Cosmic Confluence. It's not good. It's not a good card. Like. It's not even good with cave in specifically. I could use three of them though, right? I get three caves. It's a lot of caves. I could just take Echo of Dusk though, a card that I kind of like. The deck is probably going to need. The question is, am I playing this Deep Cavern Bat? Uh, it might be better to take Dart Frog if I'm trying to do the cave deck because it allows me to play multiple colors, and that's kind of what you have to be doing when you're playing caves. All right, let's take the Dart Frog actually. I think. This could be stupid, but I'm gonna do it and see how it goes, see how it pans out. Oh, now I'm gonna take Wanderglyph. Again, I want stuff that's in red, because I do need to be playing red for the uh, the cave, cave-ins. And a Wanderglyph is good, and also red. Okay, Forgotten Monument, very important. Very important. Very important. Okay, similarly important, Captivating Cave, yep. Oh, Forgotten Monument again. Actually, I think I want Necropolis over Second Monument. This is... Actually, that's not true. Mm, is it, though? Because I could because these Discover Lands... Like, this land helps fix my mana, but... Once the mana's been fixed... 
I really want the discover lands because they help get that value back, and I do want to play deep cavern bat. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take. Ah, this is tough. I'm gonna take the monument. I think. I think I can get the necropolis late, like later or easily. Wow. <laughs> this is uh, interesting. Well, I guess I'll take guide wing. As bad as it looks, I think it's. I mean, the best card by quite a long. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> needle. All right, you know what? I have. You know what? We could take bat colony. We could try to do cave. If we're if we're on the cave payoffs, we might as well do the cave payoff of cave payoffs here. If we're all in, if we're all the way in, might as well just go all in, you know? Dark Frog would be not. I don't think Grasping Shadows is very good. I don't think any of these cards are very good, for the record. Uh, which of them is the best in the cave deck? Probably Walk with Ancestors or Shipwreck Sentry, but I'm just going to take the Shipwreck Sentry. I don't know. Alright, so we have three caves currently. You really need to get to, like, eight, nine caves um, to be happy with the amount of caves that you have. But the three caves I do have allow me to play five colors very easily, or, like, easily, quote-unquote, more easily than normal. Um, especially with Bat Colony. With Bat Colony, you really need to get to a lot of, a lot of caves. Like, but, again, I'm not 100% sure I should be playing this. We're going to try it out. Oh no, oh no. I'm draft or drafting the caves deck again. This is how do I find myself in these these decks that you know are problematic. Um Breaker Splendor's good. I mean I took this shipwreck sentry. It's between Echo of Dusk and I think I'm gonna take the Echo of Dusk. Eh, maybe I should take the Blunder. I'm gonna take Echo of Dusk. I don't know. Maybe that's like really stupid. Not super interested in either of those. I mean, Tithing Blade's not bad. Ancient One, no. I will just take Promising Vein, I think, here. Ooh, okay, so it's Spyglass Siren's really good, but it's not so good in the Caves deck, and this cave is actually especially nice because it helps fix your mana. And I think I just... I think it's, I think Spyglass Siren is a good card, but not a good card necessarily in the Cave deck if you're trying to, like, play powerful stuff and just be five colors, so... I mean, it is a good card. It's such an inherently really good card, like a really strong card. But I'm gonna just take the promising vein here. Oh boy. Oh wait, there's a benthosaur. All right, but we can take that. We're all in. Do I think this wheels ever? I mean, it does sometimes, but I, like, I mean, it's that or like hidden nursery. Ah, this could wheel. It really could wheel. But the hidden nursery is not. I'm not currently green, really. I'm five colors, but I'm not really green so much. We're gonna just take the. We're just gonna take the big cave payoff guy. I'm just taking all the cards that say cave on them. And uh, that's what we're doing right now. So this is an interesting, interesting start. Huh? I'm just gonna keep all the cards in for now. <laughs> we're. It's gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be a build for sure. There's gonna be a build that contains cards again. The the deep cavern bed is kind of awkward, with the cave ins because you like give them their thing back potentially but you can also always just not cast these it's always allowed um yeah the bat colony specifically is not good with promising vein um i don't know why it doesn't they didn't template it so oh, wow okay well there's some busted stuff in here <laughs> thousand moon smithy is a super strong card uh it makes a bunch of big stuff and then I have to tap a bunch of artifacts or creatures, but that doesn't matter because it's so good. I mean, Clayfire Bricks is great too, and so is Petrify, but this card is busted, so we're just going to try to cast it. Volatile Fault is about as bad of a card as I'm not willing to play in the cave deck. Like, I'm actually, like, this this particular deck may want it because I have two Forgotten Monuments. I think I'm going to take Unlucky Drop, though. The thing about Unlucky Drop is it's not really as good. I mean, it's actually okay with the cave ins and stuff. I don't really want this. It's gonna wheel anyways, theoretically. It should wheel. So we'll just, I'll just take the draw. I mean, actually, maybe I want the Death Cap Marionette. Is that actually crazy? Because it gets the caves in the graveyard. It's a black card that sits on the battlefield early. Can trade with their big stuff. Clogs up the board. I don't hate that idea. You know what? I don't hate that idea. Might be really stupid, but I don't hate it. 
So Cavern Stomper has been good for me in the cave decks. Tinker's Tote is not necessarily what I really want. Iceberg, I think, is like what I want, kind of. Although, Tinker's Tote is really good with Thousand Moon Smithy. <laughs> the Cavens! Uh, this is... It's turning into a bit of a... Uh, this is only creature cards. I wish this were, like, permanent cards. I don't think the Poison Dart Frog is making it. I'm sorry to the Poison Dart Frog. Maybe I just take Iceberg? Thousand Moon Smithy, though. I'm gonna take Iceberg. Yeah, I'm gonna take Iceberg. That might be stupid. Oh, wow, another Benthosaur. Oh boy. Oh boy, we're just a we're just a cave control deck at this point. I think I want the Sunbird Standard. If there were ever a deck that wanted it, I think this would be the deck. So I think we we do want it. Grabbing, definitely grabbing a cave. Uh, any more caves? So there's pirates. Versus Charter Course. How good is Charter Course in this deck? I don't think I'm playing that. <sighs> How good is Pirates in this deck? It's not great. Maybe a Landmark is actually what I want. Okay, I'm going to take a cave here. Just any cave at all. Oh, wow. Okay, this came back. That's pretty nice. <laughs> An interesting start, for sure. I'm like... Esper Splash Red for the cave -ins, With two Forgotten Monuments and a Promising Vein and a Captivating Cave. I'm not even... <laughs> I'm kind of just playing all the good cards. I'm trying to play all the good cards. And it's, you know, maybe not working as well as you'd like. I'll take the drop. So I'd come back, which is nice. I'm not super, you know... I wasn't necessarily expecting it. I don't think Pirate Hat is what this deck wants. Cartographer's Companion isn't either, really, but it is colorless. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have one... I have a couple of colorless lands in my deck, but if I get enough caves, then the Forgotten Monuments just make them... Uh, really good. That colony is going to be tough either way, but I think we're going to try it out and see how it goes. I think I'm going to play this Miner's Guide Wing. That looks kind of stupid, but... Out of here, so no. Okay, well. <laughs> more wraths. <laughs> By more, I mean the first copy of a wrath. <laughs> this is... This deck is wild, man. Oh, this deck is just wild. It's, well, it's got two of some busted... Some busted rares, that's for sure. <laughs> I have to cast the rares, which is gonna be... Perhaps difficult. Perhaps be a little bit, uh... A little bit more difficult than you'd like. I have a lot of small creatures, and then I have these wraths. So, uh, just just more wraths. Yeah, that's we needed more wraths. That's, that's what we needed. I mean, honestly, like the wraths to get you to the benthosaurs isn't isn't like crazy. Like you can win games like that. Um, okay. Any caves? Any caves? All right. No caves. So either Dawn Runner or Guidewing. Guidewing is the better card generically, but in this deck specifically, it might be Dawn Runner. Because I don't know how successful I'm going to be at playing stuff on turn two. I think I'm just going to take the Dawn Runner. I understand the Guidewing's better, but again, I'm going to have like some... My access to white mana on turn one is not necessarily something I'm super... Um, you know, encouraged about right now. And this can like draw me a card in the mid-game and can be like a real threat. Where's the counters better? No caves, no caves, there's no caves. Alright, do we take a braid? We know the Forgotten's good too, but it's Descend 8 and this isn't really doing that. It's a braid versus Guide Wing. I'm gonna just take a braid, I think. Some interaction's not so bad, huh? Pit of oh, it is a Scampering Surveyor, which is basically a cave. Scampering Surveyor is exactly what I want. Sorry to Master's Guide Mural, but yeah, the Surveyor is like really important. And now I'm going to take a cave over Restless Anchorage. Sorry, Restless Anchorage. <laughs> I need. I just need the caves. Um, third Calamitous Cave-In versus Promising Vein. I'm taking the Promising Vein. It could it could wheel. It could be the last pick in that pack, I think. The uh, That card. But we got caves, baby. Oh, we got caves. All right, now I have enough caves. I finally feel like I have enough caves that I am happy with the number of caves I have in my deck. 
Uh, Alright, how many playables do I... Uh, okay, well... Alright, wait, okay, now... now, now okay, how many caves are two, four, six, seven, eight, nine? Another cave-in. Or just a nice extra cave. I can't, I really can't be helped, to be honest with you, I, I can't be helped, there's, there's no saving me from myself, I've created a prison of my own creation, I'm probably not playing black, huh, it just doesn't really make any sense to play black in this deck, so I'm probably not doing that, probably should just cut the black cards, and then I have this like, I cut the unplayable stuff. I mean, I believe I'll play Deep Cavern Bat. Why not? Honestly, I can play Deep Cavern Bat and then, like, nothing else. I don't think I want Tithing Blade. So we're just, uh, Just Guy Cave Control deck dot com. So, like, there were two more cavens I could have taken, but the problem is there's diminishing, like, returns on them. Like, because I already have an additional Wrath, too. Like, I have these Wraths, then I have another Wrath. Blunder's probably okay here. Lodestone Needle's definitely good. It's probably better than Cog Work in this deck. Wow, this is this is a this is a deck that has some powerful cards and also a lot of caves. Come on, last pick, last pick, cave in one time, one time. Ah, okay. I actually don't know if it was gonna be last pick or not. It may have been like before the last pick. The thing is about the cave ins is that you can't like they Oh, I do need another playable. Oh boy. Uh, Sunbird Standard. Does this count lands? It doesn't count lands. This is colored source. Why is there a swamp? No, we're not, we're not doing a swamp. Uh, should I just run an extra land? I think I should probably just run an extra land, huh? Uh, another red. I think we're just going to run 18 lands because I have a bunch of lands that do things like Discover and I have a bunch of like. I really don't want to play Glorifier of Suffering. Get in Landmark. We'll play Deep Cavern Bat on a splash. I have two, three, four. These aren't sources. I have four sources for it, essentially. Uh, yeah. Yeah, four sources. Do I want to play Tithing Blade? I don't think so. Maybe I don't even want to play this. Eh, I think I want to play it. It does it does get really bad with the cave ins? Sage of Days is that is that what we're doing? Is that the the world that I live in? It's not really a world I want to be living in, if we're being honest. This is, this deck is just pure chaos. I I don't really know what's going on with this deck. All right, I need to do my source count: three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, white, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, blue. I mean, it's not, these aren't like perfect exact sort of science sourcing. I'm just going to trust it. I'm just going to trust it. And I think we have 18 lands, and I think that's going to be just fine. All right. Send it. Send it. This deck. This deck is. Well, it's the furthest I've leaned into the caves deck part of the caves deck. Um, the last few times have just been like, oh, I have some calamitous cave ins. I passed two additional calamitous cave ins in this draft. One of them I probably should have taken. I probably should have taken one of them in that third pack, uh, just because it, it is a good card. But the thing is that you can have too many of them, uh, because they're, you know, Wraths. And if you draw all Wraths, you basically, it becomes a problem. And again, I have three Wraths in this deck. I have the two Cave-Ins, and I have the uh, the white one. Um, so we're, we we're, think we're okay on Wraths. And the red ones are going to be pretty, you know, significantly strong. Like, basically, like, once once you cast a Calamitous Cave-In, you should be pretty favored to win that game. Um, so I just, the whole the whole point should just be trying to survive to be able to do that. All right, let's see the first hand, mana base-wise. Mana base is excellent. <laughs> no, no issues with this mana base. No issues with this mana base, that's for sure. I'll do this and play a land... Ah. So we can just play the Sentry. Well, maybe I play Landmark because the Cave-In is going to come down soon and, like, be able to deal three. Well, I can't deal three right now. Um, But this isn't, like, really, like, a thing that I care about attacking with. Like, I don't care about attacking generally. All right, we'll, we'll play the Landmark. 
Alright, one of these is really good. I'm gonna just definitely going to the bottom. Maybe I'll just put both to the bottom. I can't cast this yet. And I don't want an island. So I think... I mean, this is a really good card. But I can't cast it. So we're going to put them on the bottom. Um, oh, it's a, is it a cave mirror? Are we, is it a cave deck mirror here? No, it's not. It's not a cave deck mirror. Uh, okay, so we are going to do this. Um, I guess I should... Should I play the... I'm actually not playing the... I'm not playing the Shipwreck Sentry. Because if I did, then that would be bad. It just kind of dies to my stuff. Is this craft? This craft with artifacts. Unfortunate. I could play the Cobble Rustler just to craft the old Ultekin landmark. Um, maybe I will do that, actually. I can eat their guy. And I can craft. It's kind of terrible. It's kind of awful. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to take two. It seems terrible, but whatever. We, we live and we breathe, you know. Live and we breathe. So we're going to go grab a red. Alright, and then I'm just going to chill, I think. Likely. Oh, I can do that. Hmm. Well, I could also just wait one turn, huh? Well, I don't really want to wait one turn so much as I want to... I'm just going to pass. I, I could... Uh, I could <laughs> this is not a Cory Graft Wrath at all. But what I can do is abrade their thing that they explore with, and then... As a result of that, um, they're going to be unhappy about it. Yeah, like, I can just abrade the thing that they explore. I mean, it's not great. I think at this point, I'm happy to play the cog work and trade off with uh, the... Um, I just block like this and the reason is that I can trade I can uh, I can now flip the landmark next turn mm -hmm, this is fine guide wing and we're gonna explore all right I guess I could abrade that save myself some problems the thing is, I want to cave in pretty bad. And they get to scry one and explore here. But I don't need to, I don't need to like cave in right now. Ah, but if they draw land, it's like really bad. Whatever. They didn't, they didn't draw land. So they're gonna just keep putting it on top, likely. It's good for me. Right, we're gonna just cave in. They don't get any explore value. They're you know we're even here. They probably saw this coming, but no Quintorius. Well, that's unfortunate. That is highly unfortunate. There's no denying that. Oh. <laughs> uh. All right. I'll take. I'll play the deep cavern bat. Taking. They have to sacrifice. I guess I'll take a Tali's favor. I don't feel super favored in this game. My opponent has played a Quintorius, which is very bad for me. <laughs> Somewhere between terrible and not very good. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not the place you want to be, for sure. So they can Dusk Rose Reliquary. Uh, oh boy. I can't cast the Glyph Bridge yet because I don't have enough mana. Ah, 
<sighs> I can tap down my remaining things and then they can just dust rose relic where to kill it. <laughs> this is so bad. This is so bad. I guess I can abrade the Dusk Rose really quickly at some point. And then cry myself to sleep, I guess. Yeah. I can cry myself to sleep now. I haven't played this game perfectly, huh? Certainly haven't played this game perfectly. They now have to do this, but that's okay. They're just going to do it. It's going to be fine. Oh. Or they can do that. That's also fine, I guess. Kind of, sort of. I mean, there's nothing really fine about it, if we're being honest. Like, I'm just super dead. <laughs> I just have... Well, I sort of... I certainly have regrets about not, uh... <laughs> about not, um... Not batting earlier. But, I, I mean, how could I have expected, you know, Mythic Rare Planeswalker, huh? I guess if I draw a land that's untapped, I might I might have a chance. I still don't think I have a chance, but I like might have a chance. Make a three two. If I draw a land that's untapped, okay. So now we do this. They lose all their stuff. They are now can contorious. Which gets all their stuff back, but you know. At least I can flip the glyph bridge. And then still be very dead. Is it any number of cards? Nope, they just created a 3 2. Well, that's kind of a nightmare, I'm not going to deny it. So we're going to probably just flip the glyph, glyph bridge, huh? They crafted with something in their graveyard. I think they should have just minus the Quintorius, but. Artifact or creature? Madge. Well. Do I have. Do I have much of a choice? I can do this and then abrade the Dusk Rose Reliquary, I guess. On their turn. It's pretty garbage. It's pretty bad. Don't feel like I'm favored in, at all in any way. I feel like this Quintorius has just killed me. Yeah, all I had to like, I mean, this game, you know. All right, I think I think they're gonna just kill me when they do this. I think I'm just pretty dead. They have five red mana. I mean, I'm, I'm just dead, aren't I? I think I'm just. I certainly feel dead, so I think I think we're I think we're good. I think we're good. Actually, they literally just kill me. They can cast a bunch of spells from exile and kill me. Yeah, Quintorius is a good card. Certainly, uh, certainly good against my deck. That doesn't interact with it in any way, other than deep cavern batting. All right, off to off to a hot start with the cave deck. It's sort of about what you expect to happen. Um, I'm I'm notoriously bad at like playing with wraths. I'm not good at it. I don't know how to do it properly. Um, it's something I, like, really do struggle with, to be honest with you. Um, certainly one of my weak points in Limited Magic is playing with Wraths and knowing what to, how to play with them properly and, like, not, not, uh, not telegraph them and stuff. Like, I just, I just don't really have a good framework for how to do that because it's not generally the, the style of deck that I like playing. Um, there's this style of, like, oh, I'm playing, like, Super Control with all these Wraths and I'm, uh, you know, trying to trying to make the game go longer so I can draw my good cards. Um, maybe I should be playing. Do I have Charter Course in my sideboard? I probably should be playing that. We're waiting. I don't know if I was beating that. I don't think my draw was gonna was lining up in a way that was beating their draw, unfortunately, because I just never really had any way to answer the Quintorius. Like the Quintorius just completely destroyed me. If I had just played to the board a little bit more, it would have been fine, I think, but I don't think there's like a way I can know that that's coming. Yeah, I'll keep this. What about this hand is good? Oh, there's there's nothing. There's no redeeming qualities about this hand. There's absolutely nothing redeeming about it in any way. Uh, I think we... 
either play so I'm either playing the Wanderglyph or I'm going to get a land. I'm gonna go get a land. <laughs> I need a, I need a planes, I think, here. Too bad to not go get a planes. Time for there to be a dinosaur and me to lose. I'm dead. I feel very dead. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. I mean, it's not fine in the sense that they get to go, like, get, like, a land or whatever, but... Thanks, deck. Appreciate it. Um, uh, we're just gonna play the Dawn Runner here. Bat Colony Pog. I mean... Do we just put that into the graveyard? No, I'm gonna keep it. It's, like, pretty good. I'm gonna keep it on top. It's it's a little psychotic, but I can just go Hidden Nursery plus Wanderglyph Landmark next turn. And then after that I can do other stuff and hopefully not just like die while my while I'm screwing around. Get it on. Okay, that is like I'm just dead to that. I don't think I can beat that. <laughs> I don't know how how do I win against that? I don't know. My opponent's going to have 8 million more mana than me. I guess I should play the landmark first. Landmark first. Oh, we have the monument too. Alright, unlucky drop could save me here. Uh, so the monument is actually good, but it might be too late. No, it's probably not too late. It's probably right on time. So a lucky drop is maybe going to be necessary. I'll just I'll just keep both. I think. We play the wander glyph, and we pass. Then next turn, I go, I cry because they have a bunch of extra mana and can now probably play something extremely large. We just have to play it pre-combat. I guess I should have kept done it in the other order. I should have put the unlucky drop on top of the monument. Although I get this way I can shuffle away the Well, actually no I can't because I don't want to shuffle using the vein. Don't want to. Alright, here comes a seven drop. Time to die. Are we going out? Am I getting killed? Oh nope, just kidding. Okay. Live. Okay, the answer was yes, but sure. Look, this is the turn that them adding the two mana is the most painful. This turn and the next turn. If we can survive those turns... Oh no. <laughs> well, it's not looking great. So if they have the plus three, plus three... Am I okay with them eating both of my guys here? Maybe I, maybe I just have to bat colony for two bats next turn. That's probably what I'm doing. And then Sunshot Militia. Yeah, I guess I guess I'll do it like this, and they're gonna use the trick, and it's gonna be really bad, but is it even that bad? I mean it's bad. But like if I just block normally, they just get to eat both of my guys. Oh, well that's fine. That is totally fine. Um, okay, so we're gonna play... I guess Forgotten Monument. And then we're gonna play... Sunshot Militia Bat Colony. Bat Colony. I think we just have to do this. Make a couple bats. Make a Sunshot Militia. Sunshot Militia can tap down some stuff. I think these two things are what it's tapping down. I can't really afford to tap down my Wanderglyph as much as I would like to. 
Maybe I can tap down the Wonder Glyph, because I don't actually care very much about it. Ah. Ah. It's going to die, and then I'm not going to get to use it to um, block, which is bad. But I don't have much of a choice. All right, here comes the mana again. I'm still very dead to this hulking raptor. Okay, I don't love that. More mana. So I can put the counter on, I don't know. But does it matter? Does it really matter? This is a this is a hand where I like needed to draw the uh Yep. I, I don't know. Maybe I <laughs> Are there any good blocks out there? This is as good as we can do. All right. to craft with a dinosaur. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. There's not a whole lot that can be done about it. Does he have Menace? I forget. No, it's just a 5-4. Well, that's fine. Alright. Promising Vein. Actually, I think I want to flip the... I can flip the Landmark. Hold on. And then I can play a Cave. The counter gets to go on the landmark, I think. And then I could try and tap that. But I'm not going to yet. Um, surely we'll be fine. Surely. Surely everything's okay. There's no issues. I should have one more mana here, but I don't, so. Will be crying. Be real nice to draw a. Uh, oh, okay, well, uh, I feel very dead. I feel like I'm going to die unless I draw exactly a uh, rumbly. Uh... Oh no, they can put the counter on the five four. Actually, I don't think that matters. I might just be dead. I'm not. I don't think I'm dead, but so obviously I'm gonna shuffle with this. Um, yeah. I think these are the blocks. Uh, sack this, search for a basic, so I have a higher chance of drawing one of my caves. It doesn't matter what basic I find. Okay. All right, one time. Nope, didn't get there. <laughs> one time. Oh, I could have hidden nursery for it. I didn't think about that. I could have hidden nursery for it. It would have been. I had another. I had another out. Dang. Did have another out. That's unfortunate. That was stupid. I conceded a little bit too early there. Even if I hit it, though, I think I'm still pretty unfavored to win that game. All right, 0-2, not, no, not, not super surprising. I don't know why the other Caves decks were more successful than this deck has been so far. Probably because they were, like, functional two-color decks. Although this deck is, like, a functional three-color deck, I think. Like, I think the mana base in this deck is actually actively good. And I have a lot of good cards. I just, you know, my opponents have gone, uh... Have drawn very well, and I have not... You know, been able to draw my good cards so far. Also, again, this is the, like, you know. All right. Good enough for me. We're gonna play the Wander Glyph just because I want to start discarding stuff so I can hit my land drops on time. It's gonna be very important to hit my land drops on time. Um, hmm. Actually, this is like more of a tap land than the. Uh, other land, assuming I want to actually fetch a basic with it, which I actually don't really want to, because I have a Forgotten Monument in play, so 
I don't really want to fetch a basic. Do I want to attack? Not right now. This is kind of my opportunity, but. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, we're just gonna keep chilling. I have two wraths in hand. Got my land drops and whatnot. I've bent the sword eventually, which I'm gonna draw into. Oh wait, it's just a mirror. <laughs> it's the it's the Forgotten Monument cave deck mirror. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Do they have counter spells? Sometimes they do. I guess I don't really care if they do, huh? It's not that bad for me. Five untapped artifacts or creatures you control, and then transform it. I'm, I'm gonna get like a, this is gonna be a dig through time for for six on the four four at some point. So I can do this, and I still can't tap. I need two more things to be able to do this. Yeah, we'll just play this, see what happens. They may counter it. I don't really care if they do. So I've made a 3-3. Three, three. It's pre-combat main phase, so I can't do it next turn. Opponent, chilling. Vibing, unperturbed. Over there. Okay, you got me. They also have wraths. That's allowed. Alright. I do not have the ability to do that. Alright, bent the sword time. Benthosaur. Let's go, Benthosaur. Um, Alright, I get to have Scampering Surveyor in my hand. I think I want Deep Cavern Bat in my hand? Sounds right to me. Surveyor finds more caves that allow me to discover and ramp me. Um, Deep Cavern Bat allows me to look at their hand and see what's going on, so I think we'll just do that. Keep coming back also survives the wrath, so there's that too. Are they going to Benthosaur me back? We're going back to Benthosaur here. So they've cast two spells. Oh, runaway boulder, sure. Not so bad. Let's, let's see what's going on. Oh, I, I want to pay a life here. I could also, I mean, I, I want to pay a life, for sure. Black. I can do this. Let's see what's in the box. What you doing over there? Oh, a deep cavern bat. Yeah, I don't really think I care about them deep cavern batting me, do I? They have, like, nothing, though. They have, like, genuinely just nothing, so I guess... I mean, the Earth Sacred Dreadmaw actually survives my wraths. But I'm gonna take the bat. And then I'm gonna play the. I guess I play this because. It's kind of better against the fact that they have. Well, I guess they have that removal spell that they're gonna probably just use. Alright, we'll play the Scampering Surveyor then. So we grab a. Hidden Nursery. I could uh, Field of the Dead over here. <laughs> Drafted the perfect Field of the Dead deck. This is not a dinosaur, so... You have made a 2 through with flying that makes a map token. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. I'm just gonna explore on that. Oh, let's go! Bat colony, huge! Huge bat colony, let's do it! This is 3 cave mana. Yeah, this is probably fine. Does it do this? There we go, excellent. Let me go like this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We got stuff. 
stuff going on over here. We got things happening. Captain Barter getting large. Oh, they have the a six six. They have a three mana six six. Oh, they have Song of uh, Stupefaction. Me. Oh no, no, not the thing. No, that, I was so worried about that thing. Do I just block? Yeah, why not, right? I mean, why not is that you can tap how many things? I mean, it's going to be doing me a bunch of damage. Let's just block. Transform that. Um, I have like a billion, billion, billion particles in the universe. Um, and I'm going to sacrifice one of these lands, specifically this one. Play that. A braid. A braid doesn't really do anything. What does this do? Artifact or creature spell using mana. Yeah, I, I don't. Really know what this is doing, but. It's not doing much, I'll say that. These cavens are uh, are not great for me. I'm gonna put a braid in the uh, the graveyard. It's like they have this boulder, but the boulder doesn't do anything. So at some point they're gonna just play an Earthshaker Dread Moss so they don't die. Uh, sure. I probably shouldn't be blocking, but. Here I am blocking. So I can get something back. What do they get back? I don't know. I, I promise it doesn't really matter that much. Hmm. I'm just gonna get decked here. So there are issues with some stuff. I guess you can have a counter, and they can discover, because I think that's probably what I'd rather do. Let's discover four. Some shot militia for sure, doing, st doing good work. Um, oh, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. The hat's a psych, that's a psych from me. Psych! That's the wrong number. Uh, I guess I don't really want to. I want to tap like this, huh? And then we're just gonna. I'm not realistically blocking, so. I'll realistically block with my 2 4 that just gets to chill. We can always go Glyph Bridge. Okay, so now we're just gonna Glyph Bridge with the Deep Cavern Bat. Sure. We're gonna just go glyph bridge here. No, no. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, hold on. Can I? I don't, I'm not gonna bother. Like, no. All right, are we good? And hold on, no. I need to. Then we cast the Glyph Bridge. Everything goes away. Now we play Guide Wing. And then I get a 4-4. Four, four. There we go. That's that's sequencing. That's sequencing. Okay? Successfully sequenced. They have now played a Earthshaker Dreadma. Congratulations. I'm thrilled for them about this, this development. Oh no, what a nightmare. I guess I'll just flip this, I don't know. Does this recast an artifact or creature spell? Creature, I can't I can't cast any of those, so I guess I could either. Do I have a discover, I have a discover land. Either way, I think I would rather do this. 
presumably. Like, surely this is fine. Uh, do I think they have a wrath? It's highly possible. Um, I have lethal next turn, right? Yeah. No reason to attack then. Sure. I guess I might as well play this Cogwork Wrestler then, because they're just going to take a cave in and it's not going to do anything. <laughs> the illusion of choice for my opponent here. They're going to be like, oh, two Calamitous Cave Ins. Interesting. So, yeah. Get to exile a thing. Sure. Happy for them, you know, it's it's a big day. Um, I am actually not in like the best position ever. Though I suppose I can just sacrifice one of my lands to make my guide wing bigger. Alternatively I could discover. That could be anything. I could even make my guide wing bigger. How much does this cost? Can I do this twice? I'm gonna just do this. Can I do it twice? I cannot do it twice. However, we can attack. Another chump. Yup. And then we now have our cave ins back, and now I get to pass. So I still could lose this game for sure. But. <laughs> Are they gonna mill two? Of hidden cataract. I mean, they were gonna die if they didn't. So now, are they dead? No, they're alive at like one. This can deal a lot of damage. Uh, I guess I could put the counter on the cavern bat. I don't know. I guess I should, yeah, I can just put it on the bat, and then sacrifice the cave, and they have to jump. Uh, yeah. The counter's on this thing, they have to jump. Yeah, sure, whatever. They have to jump the 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> Okay, they can block the 1-2 for free. I forgot about the fact that they had a land, but I'm glad that I remembered enough. Oh. Okay. I guess I killed the Flyer, then. No, I should kill the Dreadmaw. Well, hold on. So, I forgot about this. This was stupid. I did forget that this was a thing they could do. Um, I'm not going to deny that. Do I have any more... I don't have any more cave caverns. I guess I'm killing the flyer then, because I really don't care about the uh, the Dreadmaw. And now we pass. Jeez, man. Oh wait, this actually, no, no, this does matter. <laughs> Should probably crack this uh, Promising Vein, huh? Because uh, I don't really want to draw basics, huh? Seems like an intelligent thing to do. Do you think it wise? I, I need to... <laughs> Alright. Cry at the Hidden Courtyard. Yay, we did it. We eventually did it. It only took forever. Alright. Alright, got there. <laughs> It took it took a lot to get there, but we did get there. It was uh, it was a journey. It was a privilege to be here on this day. Um, but yeah, we uh, we did indeed get there. My my dignity preserved for for one more one more minute here, one more microsecond. Um, yeah, no need to need to get better about this stuff. 
need to get better about this stuff. All right. Okay, okay, all right. Dial back in. We gotta redial. We gotta re reassert ourselves. Oh, this hand is really bad. Yeah, I really need like one land. Should I? I mean, on the draw, I think I would keep this because I only need one more land to be functional. But on the play, can I really afford to keep this? I just need to draw any land that's untapped. Which is a decent amount of lands in my deck. I have 18 lands. I'm gonna keep it. Oh, it's a tough one. It is a tough one, but we are gonna keep it, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the truth. Okay. All right. All right. Now is the time. Now is the turn when I need to draw the the land. Now is now is when I need to do it right now. All right. You know what? I'll take it. I'll accept it. <laughs> I'll accept it. That's you know what? That's fine. We live with those. All right. Now we go iceberg for sure. Don't mill land. Don't mill land. Uh, now if you were gonna mill land, that's. It's not the worst one, you know, it's not the worst one to mill. Okay, so you know it's Scout coming in. Opponent hitting me for two. Not gonna play anything, an interesting maneuver. Uh, okay, so I could cave in. It seems awful. I think I'm gonna Wanderglyph plus uh, Sunshot Militia. Discarding Shipwreck Sentry, I guess. What are they keeping? Water glyph. Are they gonna just counter this? I might counter this. I did not. They have chosen not to counter it. Uh, we're gonna discard. I'm gonna discard shipwreck sentry. I think. I'm trying to find lands. Did find a land. All right. So now I can play this next turn. This card's good. So they didn't play anything with three mana. Very curious. They chose instead to not play anything and not explore either, which is weird. I don't really understand that. Um, I suppose that we could be seeing a fellow Wrath Enjoyer. If they have a counterspell, they may not have wanted to play it last turn. Let's do this. See if they have a counter spell. I'm gonna go find a cave. The cave I'm gonna go find is my tap to add a mana of any color cave, I think. So I have one discover cave already. Let's let's just grab this. Um, you guys get to attack. Discard unlucky drop, I think. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I don't love that. And they countered my discard ability, which honestly isn't even that bad for me. So that's what they held up. They should have just played that last turn. That was not wise of them. Um, so I do need to have removal for this Cavern Stomper because it's going to cause me enormous amounts of problems. I can I just play Benthosaur TBH? It's not so bad. Draws me some cards. I could play the Smithy as well. Smithy plus something else, but I think we're just gonna bet the sword. Minus one life, huh? <sighs> it's that or like miners no, that's that's bad. We'll just play the Benthosaur. Bent the sword can find me some more lands. Uh, hidden cataract and The blunder? It's either blunder or forgotten monument. I think I'm gonna take the blunder. I'm gonna take the blunder, I think. No hidden cataract, no attacks. Hidden cataract, no attacks. Probably gonna lose this game because my opponent has a cavern stomper. I mean, if I get, you know, two more caves. We could be in business, but we're certainly not necessarily gonna. Okay. <laughs> well, 
I guess I could. Do I want to do it like this, or do I not want to do it like this? I think I'll do it like this. I just, I need two more caves anyways. Benthosaur. Second Cinemus Benthosaur. Lodestone Needle Prompt. So I need, okay. Because I could bounce something and then, or I could just go double cave in. Promising Vein. So it's, I guess the question is, am I am I too locked and loaded on having to deal with this Cavern Stomper via, via cave-in? Answer is maybe. So I could just take Promising Vein Deep Cavern Bat and look at their hand. Or I could just take Lodestone Needle, Promising Vein. I think I'm going to take those two. Play the Promising Vein. Um, and then what happened was I'm probably going to pass, take another damage if I do that. Yeah, I guess we'll see what they do. Right, we're going to lodestone needle down there. Um, their water wind scout, I think. And that's okay with me. So now what do they do? Are they just are they just out of stuff? I think there's out of stuff to do, potentially. Cog work. Cog work, it's in play. Gotta play it so it's in play. Poison dart frog, okay. Alright, I am going to scry to. <laughs> there's There's a lot of thinking I gotta do here. Don't suppose there's like a world. How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have enough exactly to go unlucky drop plus cave in. Oh man. <laughs> this, this is so complex. Do they ever block with the cavern stomper? Probably not. I guess we just go landmark and then pass potentially. Bat colony's good. I think. Um, and I'm just gonna play... Well, this doesn't work because it gets dealt a bunch of damage and then dies. <sighs> Kinda annoying. Do you think if I attack with the Wander Glyph, they'll block with the Cavern Stomper? Maybe I attack with Wander Glyph and one Benthosaur. Discarding, yeah, I like this. Okay, I, like, I don't hate this. So we do this. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, well, that was stupid. That was not smart. I thought that this, oh, that thing. I didn't realize that it did that. But I would just love to be able to cast Cave in this turn if they just block my thing. Otherwise, I have to do some other weird shenanigans. Okay, there. Did block it. Okay. Well, in that case, we're caving them in, boys. Um, all right, and so now I can go. I can flip the landmark, or I can just play Guidewing. I can. I think flipping the landmark is pretty good. It's gonna cost me a life to do that. Okay. We live with that. We live with those costs. I can live with that. All right, so now I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I have a lot of things going on. Mill two, but I have cleared their much larger board, and I'm about to make a ton of flyers, so that's good. This will work. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. Well, I want to go. Huh, this is gonna cost a lot of life. 
It's going to cost a lot of life. Well, no, it's not. Bat Colony plus Thousand Rune Smithy plus Guide Wing. Miner's Guide Wing. I think I have enough mana for this, right? I have 8 mana. Yeah, it's going to just cost me a couple life to do it. Could we not? It's going to cost me two life. Two more life. And then I can do it. I think that's fine. Going to, uh, going to whatever. Do they have a counter spell to go to four? I got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of enemies. Oh, they get to kill my thing? Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. I do have concerns about. Oh, they're just off it. <laughs> okay. We got there. We got them to block with a cavern stomper. That's all I needed. All I needed was a cavern stomper block. And we were there. I made like the weirdest attack ever, but honestly I think the attack was kind of decent. I think it was a decent attack. It worked out, obviously, but I don't like it was it looked super weird. Like it looked like the weirdest thing ever. That was a weird keep too, lest we forget that keep was one of those keeps that you're like, well, I'm just gonna pray that I draw lands, and I do have eighteen of them in the deck, so we, we did we did draw some lands. Which was good. This is a very fun deck to play. Is the deck good? I don't th I think it has a lot of functionality issues in terms of its like mana base and it's well the mana base actually is very good the the rest of the stuff <laughs> the like playing well with its own stuff the benthosaur seems like it was it was really strong has been really strong for me it's possible i should even be playing like, that poison dart frog to accelerate like it's on the sideboard but maybe i should be playing it just to accelerate to my big stuff kind of hate this hand um, I think I want to just get the caves online here. Could be stupid. Um, go Wander Glyph. This is like the most cave light hand I've had. Please don't make me not able to play this. Otherwise I have to play like Bat Colony for no value. Okay, that's fine. This is like totally not that good for me, but you know what? Alright, here we go. Discard of planes. I rip to whatever. Rip to three drop. That's not so bad. But Dawn Runner. Dawn Runner is a good card. I don't want that. <laughs> I do not want that card. That's for sure. I want caves, caves, caves. Caves, caves, caves. Don't want to see you. never recover from that. Uh, I think I just played Deep Cavern Bat here. Because I want to like disrupt them more than I want to play like two bats. Wow, okay, well. <laughs> Guess I'm going to be depressed then. Waterman Scout going underneath the Deep Cavern Bat. So they have Unlucky Drop. So I can unlucky drop my deep cavern bat, and I'm gonna just have to put it on the bottom, unfortunately. I don't know, maybe they. I mean, I don't know. Is it a miss if they play the eh. companion and then use the map token? That's fine. They chose not to use the map token. An interesting choice. Now this is an interesting situation. I could glyph bridge, but it's not actually very good. I could play bat colony. So glyph bridge is okay, but it's not great here. I would rather get more of their things at the expense of like me losing some of my things. I get to you know gain some more life here. All right, we'll see. We'll see what happens. 
go for the like unlucky drop line. I don't know. I mean, there's so they do have a like six five. I do need to keep an eye out for that. Um, the question is, do I double block the plundering pirate? Ugh, gross. Or do I just block the? Well, they're probably not attacking the guitar. I guess I just don't block. I don't. All right, please, please hit a not land. Oh, I hate you. I'll never forgive you. Are they gonna land cycle? Good question. Yeah, I'll definitely block like this. Then, if given the option to block like that or block the other way, I'm gonna block like that. For sure. Um, and then now, I'm just gonna attack. Do they have the bounce spell? this. I think I'm just going to pass. They're just going to mountain cycle the monster sword. Sure. I think they were probably might have been better off just... I mean, obviously they traded so they could make like a 6-6 six, six here. Um, not super interested in blocking. I, the reason not to block is that it choreographs the wrath too much. I'm just going to flip the thing. That's fine. Okay. Alright, I'm just gonna do this. Attack first, though. Actually, yeah, I'm attacking first. Auto pay, minus one life. Explorer, found a land, nice. Okay. Not so bad. Not so bad. It's not so good either, but it's not so bad. Um, so they have Unlucky Drop, which they can use to put the Deep Cavern Bat. Probably not on top. I'm probably not putting it on top here. I'll probably put it on the bottom. Because I have bent the sword to draw a bunch. Okay, they are just going to do that. It's going on the bottom. They're just going to play probably Waterwind Scout. Yeah. Which isn't so good for me, but we're just going to play Bent the Sword. Bent the baby. Let's go. Right, Brackish Plunger Island, not the uh, not the most, not the most um, emphatically great finds off the Benthosaur, but we put an island on the bottom, so that's not so bad. Currently, the cave in only deals three, which actually is good for me. That's unfortunate. The hope is that I can get them pretty good with the cave in this turn. Because they're going to play Pundering Pirate plus another 3 drop a lot of the time. And if they just pass, I probably have to like cry myself to sleep. And be sad. I'm going to bounce Benthosaur. They're not going to bounce Benthosaur. <laughs> Highly reasonable. Um... Yeah, I don't love that for me. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest. I guess I'm attacking. I don't have enough artifacts to transform this right now. I'll attack. Get in for four. I can just abrade plus brackish blunder, I guess. And that's like kind of okay. I guess I'm abrading now, though, if I'm doing that. Well, they have an iceberg on top, actually. I might want to save the abrade for the iceberg. <sighs> what if I just flip this? How much life does it cost? It costs cost five. It costs two life. I need to keep a blue and a red. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So I can pay one to add one with white. And then. Blue, blue, colorless. Transform this. Craft with the artifact. And then end turn. Uh, 
This will actually be pretty, this actually plays pretty well, in theory. I guess I could bounce my own. They're not going to be able to cast spells? Support who attacked you with Planeswalker this turn can't cast spells. Oh, uh, well, I guess. But they can't cast spells. Which is an interesting choice. Um, because they're going to die. Can't cast any spells. So we just bounce the 4-4. Four, four. So they can't cast any spells. I guess I don't really want to go for lethal. I can just go for the other lethal, huh? They go to 1. Hmm. I see. I understand now what's going on. Yeah. I'm just gonna chump. And I can live with that. Um <sighs> So I have one unknown card in hand. Uh Certainly like the idea of just playing Slingshot Militia and Thousand Moon Smithy, but I also like the idea of not dying. So I just play Thousand Moon Smithy and then hold up a braid. Yeah. They can bounce, so does this bounce something? It does. They can't attack me if they bounce something. Oh, that's actually bad though, right? So they're not attacking, which means that I need to be able to get through a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-4. Four, four. All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this and then pass. <laughs> so they can use the thing pre combat or they can't cast spells. And that's that's it. Those are the rules. So either they can cast spells or they can attack me. So this deals like one damage by itself. I don't know, this could have been the wrong line. I I don't like stand by this line. If I had like infinite time. Whenever a opponent casts a spell during their turn, they can't attack your planes or huge controls turn. Yeah, sure. So they can turn that to my hand. Okay, sure. That's allowed. Deal three damage to the Waterwind Scout. Um, I now can uh, hold on. Put the counters on the Sunshot Militia, I think. Then they have to block and then die. Nice. All right, we got the three wins with this cave deck. <laughs> this <laughs> this five color amalgamation of a, of a cave deck. Oh boy, it's just it's it's a struggle. It's every game is a struggle. Um, got to uh, you know got to fight through the the struggles. But we are we're working on it. <laughs> Oh boy, have three wins has been the best I've done in like a couple of uh, days. Now I've had other stuff going on. It's the holidays, you know. We got Thanksgiving coming up soon here, so we got preparations going on. So I've been a little, you know, maybe not as dedicated, perhaps the last, you know, couple of days. Um, so it, we, this is this is you know a big this is a big moment for me. We're trying to improve upon that situation and hoping that the caves can carry us. The caves have been very good to me. The caves that I like this hand.
and I don't love it, but you know, I, I mean, two uncastables and um, you know, two uncastables bat colony is always good. That's always a, that's a keeper, right? Two uncastables bat colony. Yeah, you got to keep that. I'm on the draw too. <laughs> ah, you know, it'll be fine. Surely I'll rip a uh, mountain off the top. Actually, that wouldn't even be that good because I still have to play like the cataract on. I actually did rip a mountain off the top. Well, now it's interesting. Okay, it is not interesting. It, the interest has, uh, has, has waned. We're just going to play the tap land. Tap land, tap land against red, right? Always good. Always a good start. Against that deck in particular. Okay, they're just they're loading up over there. No, they're not loading up. There's no loading up going. All right, please can I can I draw my? Okay, we drew the wrath. That's a positive. Unfortunately, currently doesn't do anything. Um, because of the reasons. Hmm. So I'd really like to draw another cave, but the problem is it has to be an untapped cave, and then. You know. All right, we we did cast a three mana with make a couple of one ones here. My opponent is on very very aggro at the moment. Well, not very very aggro, but they have gone one drop or one mana spell, two mana spell, and then use all their mana. They've used all their mana every turn. Okay, that's what's that's what aggro means in this context. I'm taking another five damage. I could have not taken the five damage. I could have said, ah, eh, you know, maybe I don't want to take the five damage. Okay, I don't super care about that. Oh, I did rip a cave. Well, now, that is something to be noting. Uh, I guess I'm kind of okay with the idea of just play... If I just play the Deep Cavern Bat and take their last spell... And then depending on what it is, I can block. I think I like this. If they don't have a spell... Okay, they don't have a spell, so I can just block freely. Um, the 4, the 3, 4. Well, so they don't have a spell, so that means their last card is likely... Um, land. Uh, so we'll do... I think we're going to block, like, this. I think this is the only, like, reasonable blocks that make sense. Well, I guess I should block like this, huh? Because they can either kill the lifelink or the 2-2. Two -two. This way. They might be able to kill both. So, what is their last card that they drew here? So they chose to kill the 2-2 two -two instead of the lifelinker, fine. I guess they can make a 4 times. I mean, really I would like to draw. I kind of need another cave. Just one more cave. Just one more cave. Surely, one more cave will be enough. Copium. One more cave is... One more cave is enough. Please, please. Please, my caves. They're very sick. Um, so attacking seems bad, huh? <laughs> it certainly seems bad. Because they never block ever. But I guess I could... No, I don't know. So I could unlucky drop something... Kellen's pretty bad though for me. I don't think they're ever blocking. Oh, they blocked. Alright, well. In that case, we'll do this. It's gonna have to be good enough. This? Okay, well, they blocked, so I'm in the game. I was gonna not be in the game, but they blocked, so now I'm in the game. And now, if they discover next turn. I can go, I'm definitely playing the Wanderglyph. The question is, do I play Lucky Drop or the Smithy? Uh, the Smithy makes a 3-3, three, three, and then Lucky Drop removes their creature and like puts it maybe on the top of their deck during the like Explorer turn. I think I just want to play the Smithy. Um, that could end up being really stupid, but I'm just going to do that. Yeah, this could be really dumb, but I am going to just do it. Like, because now they just discover, like, guilt-free, no problem, you know? Like, they have no problems doing that. 
I don't know. Maybe I was supposed to hold up drop because now, because if they discover into like a removal spell or a creature or something, it's I don't know. I, yeah, I was supposed to hold up drop. I was definitely supposed to hold up drop. This this feels bad. Hopefully they miss. All right, they basically missed. For all intents and purposes, they missed. So that's good, but. Mm -hmm. So now I get to hold up drop. Or I just play drop, even. I think I'm just gonna play drop. Because it basically just removes their guy. And I get to attack. Yeah, let's, let's actually just play drop. Uh, they didn't equip. So they're gonna do this. So they're gonna put it on top or not? Probably not going on top. I can't imagine it does, yeah. Attack, discarding a that. Oh wow, really good draw. Uh, you, I guess I messed up the ordering, but. <laughs> to be fair, the guide wing being smaller isn't necessarily bad. Okay, that is a concern, but actually now I'm, well, no, I'm not glad that I did that. Can uh, start tapping stuff down, deal one damage per turn to me. Fortunately, I have uh, caves that allow me to be like I'm like if they, they can't tap down their their dude, right? All right, now we just do this. I think <laughs> they can't. Yeah, let's let's do this attack for a bunch. Can I do this and then also sack a land? I can't. Hmm. I am going to just bounce this though, I think. It's a lot of damage. I know I can. I can sacrifice this cave. Well, that's good. So in that case, I will definitely do that. So now they're at five. If they just replace Sunshot Militia, it's not good enough. They have Minecart, that doesn't do it either. Nice. Nice game. Opponent blocked, and I, I got to win as a result of that block. If they didn't make that block, I was super dead. All they had to do was not block there. Because now I just get to attack. They block my 4-4 four, four and take 6. Um, so... Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, four. we made it to 4 wins. The journey continues. The quest, the quest to continue to my continue my cave hot streak in this format continues. The quest to even the score with the caves. No, it's not evening the score. It's continuing to do better than the, do better than the score uh, with the caves. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So I'm keeping this. Yeah, I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I am going to keep it. Uh, I guess I'll play the Captivating Cave on one, and then the Promising Vein on two. Okay, I could play Island, but that's, like, considerably worse than just going to get a mountain. Or I guess I get a Plains in this spot. Because I can play Dominator next turn if I get a Plains. Bat colony, no, Sag. Uh, I guess we play Forgotten Monument, huh? Then we play Dawn Runner. Benthosaur is pretty good. Benthosaur is pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it on top. It's pretty good. I do have a land drop for next turn. It is a six mana spell, so it's concerning, obviously, but do I just abrade that? Uh, probably, right? Let's attack first, see what happens. If they just block, I might just let that. No, I think I'm going to abrade it still, but. I'm not going to abrade it until post them crewing it, I think, though. I'm thinking about the post-combat crew. It's a rare technique, but... 
post damage uh, careening minecart crewing is. I guess I want to wait till after they crew it, right? I think that's what I want to do. Yeah, this is fine. I could play Sunshot Militia here and just let them get a treasure. Like, how bad is them having a treasure? It could be pretty bad. I think I'm just gonna blow it up. I think I'm just gonna blow it up. Destroy target artifact. We're gonna do that. <sighs> yep. I think we're just gonna. I think we're just gonna destroy some artifacts. I could have waited because I would have probably been fine trading shipwreck sentry for it. But I also think that if they were factoring that mana into their plans, which it looks like you know might have been happening, like I just kind of got the sense that they were like, oh, I'm gonna have an extra mana because I'm gonna be able to crew the minecart and attack. Like that was just kind of the vibes that I was getting then, um, yeah. Okay, well, they did find something else to do. They are a multicolored deck, so the, the treasure did really matter for them. The treasure was certainly something that they needed. They put Petrify and a Braid in the yard. Are they playing? They're just playing the Caves deck. Dude, I'm telling you, the Cave Mirrors, they're, they go crazy. Okay. I guess the question is, do I want to go get a mountain here or not? I think I'm going to Brackish Blunder. As crazy as that sounds, and it is pretty crazy. I guess I could just not say that I did. I guess I should just do this, huh? I think I'm gonna just cry at the promising vein. Well, I don't think I need to. I, I wanna draw lands, because like, I wanna hit Benthosaur. So I actually think that cracking it is, uh, they can discard their hand to do stuff. Okay, that's fine. They can draw cards and stuff as well. Or it's so good. Oh, we hit a land, let's go. Specifically a cave, which is even better. Bent the sore. Bent the sore. Okay, we want this and we want the courtyard, I think. Uh, I think I'll just do this because I don't really want to block with either of these and be much happier blocking my shipwreck sentry. Come on, baby, make it. That was not the best five to see up at the sore, to be honest. But that's actually good because it means they're on the bottom of the deck. Bottom of the deck, bottom, bottom of the deck. So the Taran's journal, I don't. Oh, Deadweight. That's fine. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> I think Deadweight's got to go in the yard here. Yeah. This is actually specifically why I tapped the Benthosaur, right? Because the Capybara can get bigger. And then. Okay, fine. You got me. You got me. Okay. How does it feel? Does it feel good? Are you happy? Yeah, I'm just going to make this block. The Taran's journal is going to cause problems at some at some point in the future. What that point is, is like maybe right now. I guess it's not right now. Oh, they're just sacrificing. Oh, sure. I suppose that's allowed. So I can do this and tap down my four things, and then I'm not getting in with the Sunshot. I'm not doing one damage with Sunshot Militia. I want to play this Hidden Courtyard this turn, if possible. I think it is possible. Yes, let's do this. Ah. Four. Not the best for me here. I don't feel like I'm in a great spot. I do have the blunder for this extra, which isn't immediately good. Are they discarding their hand? They've decided not to discard their hand. Oh, those are some good ones, huh? <laughs> uh, they put the removal spells in the yard. Took land plus... Is it... How, why can you get off of this? Creature card and land card. I always forget what the text on that card says. I'm not going to deny it. Is there dinosaurs in there? 
Not right now. Any hand of discarders. I don't know how the templating on that works. Like if they exile a spell, if they exile a dinosaur with this and then I bounce it and they recast it, can they still cast the exiled dinosaur card? I think the answer is yes, but I'm not 100% sure. Depends on templating, 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 templating. They're gonna do be a hand discarder. All right, Um. okay, I think I'm down to Inverted Iceberg here. I can just craft it, right? Do I have any artifacts? I do not. Noted. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> Caven does wipe the board. What is this what does this land do? You may cast a creature spell from your graveyard this turn if you do it enters a battlefield with the finality counter on it. Okay, so probably don't just like wipe the board because then they can just cast creature spells from their graveyard. Okay, gotcha. I don't really want to uh, attack. I guess I could attack. I guess I could just bounce the extra on their turn. Well, how much mana do I have up? Bounce it now and then explore. They get to explore as a result of that. I don't have enough mana to do the thing that I want to do. But my clock is a lot faster than theirs. Nope, that's going in the yard. So I guess they can cast stuff from their graveyard. But I am now put them put them at eight. They're now at eight. Can get stuff back with finality counters. The thing that what can they cast? They can cast poison dart frog and capybara. Those are both fine. I have a feeling they're going to be using the nursery here. Or I guess they could axe jaw first. And see what they discard. See what they hit. I guess I probably want to crack this promising vein now, huh? Uh, well, that's unfortunate. No, it's not unfortunate because they can't actually do the thing. This is an activated ability. Yeah. So they just cast Poison Dart Frog probably, so they can block my flyer. I'm gonna shuffle. Yeah, so they can block my flyer now. Unfortunate, but I guess I so if I give this two counters, they can't block the flyer anymore and all their stuff dies. But I need to have enough mana for that, which I currently do not. Which means I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I am going to do it. Because I'm a hater. Uh, I guess I need red? What is this? What color is this? I think I need red. I need a mountain. Yeah, I don't have enough mana, right? Yeah, one short. I guess I could do tap iceberg, tap militia. Um, flip the iceberg. Because I'll cog work and just play Wanderglyph and tap down a couple of things, specifically these things, I think. Uh, I'm not super interested in discarding a card now. I probably should DBH, like the cave-in is, this is actually a situation where it's like, I kind of wish the cave-in had, you know, I could make it smaller, but you kind of can't. I guess they can make it smaller for me, which would be very nice of them. They haven't done that. Opponent has chosen. Oh, I guess, wait, they can cast 
It's dinosaurs that they own. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. They also may or may not have forgotten about that. So they can now kill my Guardian of the Great Door, which is fine. Or the Iceberg Titan. Cast Capybara. I probably shouldn't have played the Wanderglyph. If I'm being completely honest about it. This is an instant. Gross. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've played this perfectly. I'm just gonna exile that now. Wait, hold on. You're chumping? That's rather bold, I would suggest. High level of boldness. Uh, they can cast all their stuff again. <laughs> they have to chump. So, I suppose that... I don't hate the... I mean, they can also just not chump, I guess, and die. What do I do with this hidden courtyard? I can get some finality counters so it's exiled. So I probably just want to use the hidden courtyard, right? So I guess I'll do a pre-combat. So who's in the box, huh? <laughs> Put that in my hand, probably. Attack with this. Jump. Oh, they have enough mana. I didn't see that. Sneaky. Sneaky. I did not see that they had enough mana. That's on me. I should not have attacked. That was very bad. Some might even describe it as like a disaster. Fortunately, it's still fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I have enough mana to do the cave-in plus. Um, play the bat colony next turn, which is good. Okay, yep, sure. Fortunately, that is not large enough to kill me. Do this. Go to four. Cave in Bat Colony. They can't cast anything from their graveyard this turn. Okay. Cave in. No, no, you're not going to do that. Haven. And then they take a billion damage. Are they, their creatures all die. <gasps> oh, I forgot about that. I did forget that they could exile almost to die. <laughs> I got very brutalized by uh some things that went on. Fortunately, still have the bat colony. I could also lodestone needle the spike tail. I th think I'd rather play the bat colony though, because yeah, because it starts giving me a clock. I have to chump, but I get three bats. I forgot that they could reduce the size of the the cave in there by like one. But it's still okay, I think. I think we're still doing, like, kind of okay. A, because I have another cave in. I'm gonna jump. If they have the, uh, the trick, they have the trick. They don't have it. Okay, great. Okay, they're gonna cast probably the Axe Jaw here. Or they could cast the Paleontologist and then get back the Axe Jaw. I don't think they have enough mana for that. I can also almost have lethal here, right? I can put them to one and then, I can put them to one, but I can, yeah. I can sack the captivating cave and then they, can, they actually do have enough mana. That's very unfortunate. 
That's a good draw, though. <laughs> so I could blow up their stuff again. Uh, so they can get back a permanent card. What's a permanent card? So they can get back Petrify. That's pretty unfortunate. So Petrify means that I would die if I did the thing that I'm talking about doing. So this does, it doesn't do enough damage. Hmm. Yeah, I just die to that, so um, I guess we're gonna cry. So it's gonna happen. Do I have, do I have the ability to transform this? Yes costs five six mana all right well they might go get back petrify thinking that i don't have an answer yeah i have enough mana for Exactly one explore, so I think I want to do that. Uh, it doesn't matter, does it? It's you, I guess. I can craft. Submit one. Pay the one to have you explore. That is not good enough. Play the guide wing. Attack with one thing exactly. I think they can get back petrify. I go to one. I go to one. Yeah, I think I have to attack with exactly one thing. They get back petrify. I go to one. Is there anything else they can get back? They can't cast anything from their graveyard. Yeah, so they, they petrify the guide wing, I chump, I go to one. And then I have lethal next turn. If if they don't hit something off of the discover cave. So they actually I think have to discover, right? Because I think they have to discover. They don't have enough mana to get back, discover, and then also get back something with the petrify. Alright, let's see it. Nice. Yes, this is big. They missed. Yes. Huge. That's huge. Now they can't petrify my thing, so I should just win now. Assuming I don't mess up the blocks. Which can always happen. <laughs> Certainly shown the ability I have to mess things up in this game, so. So they do have enough mana to do this and then petrify, but it doesn't matter because I still have enough blockers. I guess. Well, but if they petrify the 2 2, then I don't have to chump, right? Or I, I can chump with one thing and then it doesn't. Like I packed dead weight. It similarly doesn't work. I guess I could miss up my explorer. Well, actually, does, does it matter even which of these I explore on? It doesn't, right? Go to one. Um, it does not matter, right? Because either they can deadweight it or they can't. I don't think it matters. Alright, well, 
I need to rip. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter because I needed to hit the one one counter anyway. Well, well, deck, I need your help. Come on, permanent. Yes. Got there. Oh man, no secret reach, please. Oh, oh baby, that was that is <laughs> that is the close of a game as you can have. Wow, that was a that was a good game. That was a good game. That's a tough game. That is that is a very very close game that. I probably could have made a little less close at some point during that game. There's probably like a turn. The the them having the ability to exile a cave from my graveyard to reduce my the size of my spell really kept them in that game. Otherwise, I think they were just totally done. But um, yeah, I think. Whew, tough one. Did did eventually need the did eventually need the luck at the end, but we did get it. So there's no complaining on my end. This is a good hand. Only has one cave for cave in, but. I can easily play Wanderglyph on two and Iceberg on two, all that good stuff. Two caves for Caven, now you got me thinking. Now you got me thinking. Now you got me thinking. Because now you can Promising Vein get a, uh, a Plains, which I definitely want to do at some point here. Is that better than Iceberg on two? Probably. It probably is. Especially because it gives me more time to figure out what I want to do. Yeah, I think I'm going to just Promising Vein go get a Plains here. I'm not particularly scared of the Tendril with the Micro Tyrant right now. If we're being honest. Um, it is a little bit, you know, suspicious. But also I don't want to mill, like, my Plains. <laughs> I have more than one of them, but... Go grab a basic, in this case, planes. Because I want to draw caves too. That's part of the reason I'm doing it like this. Because I should play the iceberg first, huh? Any caves? No caves. So, no head. Alright, well, it's getting a little concerning. I do need to not die. Part of not dying. Um, I mean, I either need to draw a planes or a cave that is untapped here in order for me to be alive. I am going to... I am potentially going to die. All right, well, that's a 1-1. One, one. All right, that's a cave, and it's also an untapped... Or is a, it's a planes and a cave, so I'll take that. Not going to... Uh, not going to... Not going to say no to planes plus cave. Specifically, which cave do I want? So the only card in my deck that makes me want to get the Forgotten uh, Monument is the Bat. Otherwise, I just want to get Hidden Courtyard. So I think I'm just going to get Hidden Courtyard. I'll probably just block a Kowale here. A Kowale. No, actually, hmm. it depends on which Wrath I have to use. I could even play Benthosaur next turn. Hmm. If they just attack, what do I do? <sighs> Probably block the Akawale. I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, I'll probably just block. Because it takes the less, least damage, too. Which I think is also nice. Um, it's also a nice thing that it does for me. So that's good. I basically just need to survive this turn without them playing a four toughness creature, and I'm in a great spot. And if they play a four toughness creature this turn, I might have to do some things I'm, I, I would regret, you know? I have to do some regrettable things. So this thing can sacrifice and get minus X, minus X, and kill my creature if they get it to be larger. Yeah, we're just gonna block this one takes the least damage, which is nice. They do descend. Yep, that's obviously good for them. Um, 
please just like don't play something big. Prage. We're praying that they don't play anything large. Just play like two small things. Okay, that's one. All right, good enough. <laughs> cave them in, everybody. Cave them in. Then we get to play Wander Glyph here. I do have another cave in, but I also have a Glyph Bridge, so. Because I have options, I can uh, I can make different plays, and that's the key to that's the key to playing is that you get <laughs> different options. How dude? How are my most successful decks consistently in this format? Cave decks. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why I'm only succeeding with cave decks, and all my other decks just they're just not as good. Okay, fine, you got me. Uh, we're just going to play Benthosaur here. It's not the best Benthosaur ever, but I don't really want them to keep a 1-1. One -one. I guess they can start... Uh, I should not have played that land. That was very bad. Uh, I guess we take a Braid. I don't know. Probably take this and a Braid, huh? Yeah, probably take those two. Benthosaur coming in and doing stuff. Drawn two cards when it enters the battlefield. Yep, that's that's what it does. Mm -hmm. Oh no, are we at the hidden nursery stage of the game here? That's going to be unfortunate for my opponent if that's the case. So I actually may not want to play this Forgotten Monument because I can just... Oh, probably not going to cast that one. I probably actually hold this Forgotten Monument because I might just wanna. Probably just gonna play Iceberg this turn, or just flip Iceberg this turn. Um, they can, I guess, kill it. Actually, do I have enough mana? How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I have eight mana, so that should be enough. Yeah, it's enough mana. That if they go for the. Uh, they go for the thing, they're just gonna get blown out and lose. They kinda have to do it too, so like they know I have like I know that they have it and they know that I have it. Or like they they know that I know that they have the final strike plus death plus death touch combo. I, however, know that they know that I know that I have that they have this combination and here they are gonna go for it. Opponent, I'm sorry to tell you it's not gonna it's the the, uh, the check is in the mail, as it were. I have red white up, what could I have? I mean, certainly not a braid, that wouldn't make any sense, I would never... I don't seem like the type of guy to have a braid in my hand, do I? Oh, they, <laughs> they decided against it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... I'm not worried about that. Is this, is this enough mana to do the thing? It is. Uh, I can just do this, though. Which is plenty good enough, I think. I guess they could... No, they can't deal, deal damage. I don't know why I'm thinking so much. Let's tap this. We're just gonna play Guide Wing and Monument here, and we're good. And we are uh, we're we're chilling. They didn't do the thing. They 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 sniffed out my removal spell. They they did they even did the Death Touch part of it, and they were like, and then they were like, wait, he could have this thing. But uh, opponent has decided to mill for us. It's not gonna just not gonna do it. Would you like to put this on top? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Solid game. So that one was a game where, like, basically, my opponent didn't play anything with more than three toughness. And that was good for me. That was a positive for me. Alright, well, I think there's one more game to play. One more hill to climb. Can I get another cave deck trophy? Or am I just going to be stuck? Being sad again in my cave trophyless life.
It would be it would be an O two into a seven two if if completed. Already in a, six straight wins already pretty good, but the uh, the O two into seven two would be a nice nice way to nice way to do caves. I, the cave deck is real. What can I say? I have to acknowledge the realness of the cave deck. I might even just start becoming a caves like one trick. <laughs> Um, the thing is, you need to have the cave-ins in order to draft the deck, so if you don't get them, you kind of can't draft it, and it, uh, it becomes a failure. Yeah, we'll keep this one. Solid one. One drop on one in this deck, in this economy? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, we'll just do this and scry two. Um, I don't really want either. Actually, lodestone needle could be okay. I don't really like. It's kind of tough because I wouldn't mind the lodestone needle, but I kind of also need stuff that's like proactive to do. So lodestone needle definitely isn't. Nah. So I'm somewhat unclear what I should be doing on that scry. No regrets. So I'll play a mountain. No, I should play a cave. I should play a cave. Attack. Ow, my eyes. I probably, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I ever really blocking here. It's nice to have the option to block. I will block, for the record. Um, I don't want to take two damage for no reason. If they kill my, th oh, that's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem, potentially. I do have the glyph bridge to deal with it. It's going to come at a cost, potentially, of many things. Because uh, I take staunch crewmate, as crazy as that sounds. Maybe I should just take cloud guard. I'm not taking the petrifies. They can petrify my stuff all they want. I think I'm going to take staunch crewmate. Let me go like this. This so I get to scry one. They're probably just gonna <laughs> play the uh, things. What does this become? Become it's three white, white, white. Okay, all we need is not that. I just need lands. I just need lands that are untapped. That's it. Uh, I guess I will play this though. As bad as it looks. Just because I don't know how much it matters if I uh, mm, because I'm already blocking the stuff on the ground. Come on, deck untapped land one time. Come on, deck. I should probably have chumped with the guide wing. Would have been a lot better. I'm not going to deny it. Petrify me. We didn't find it. We didn't find it untapped land one time. Well, now we found an untapped land one time. Uh, yeah, these can attack, I think. Um, yeah, we'll pass. All right. That doesn't really matter, does it? I guess I do this, yeah. 
this. You get to explore. I do hit a land. Nice, we hit a land. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, I'm gonna crack this for a planes, presumably. And I get to go. Lift bridge. And place shipwreck sentry. And now they can still do stuff, but oh, I'm now in the game. I was out of the game, and now I'm like in the game and not just like completely dead. But uh, I was certainly out for a bit there. I guess they're at 11, so it's not like a complete nightmare. I am at 8, though. Be advised. Do they have any more artifacts? They do still have another artifact. The petrify means that they couldn't attack me potentially. Hmm. Play a blue. I get well. It's kind of tough because I can flip this cliff bridge. If they petrify it, they can't attack me. Yeah, it's probably better than, than not doing that. I'm not going to attack with the sentry, but I will do this. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is fine. Because they can petrify, but then they can't attack, right? So they would have to attack first. And then they can't cast the spells. So it, it's, it's a delicate balance. So they're going to petrify, so they can't attack me. Which is nice. This is actually the, the cast spell thing still triggers, which is very nice. I'm honestly not upset about that at all. I guess I could even sacrifice that as much as it kind of makes me a little concerned. I think we'll iceberg first. Oh boy, I kind of hoping to mill an artifact. We actually did, so that's that's good. So now I can do. Exile my lodestone needle. Which is honestly way better for me. I go up to 10. I can start Master's Guide Muraling. But they can't cast spells and attack me in the same turn. Which is nice. It's nice. It's a good place to be. They're probably just get a Master's Guide Mural and then attack, I guess. Tapping down my 6-6. Six, six. But the thing is, I have a 6-6 six, six that can tap down their stuff as well. Craft, okay. So they can now tap my 6-6. Six, six. Do I just chump here? Chumping seems pretty good. Is it ever getting any better? <laughs> like, is this 3-3 three, three ever realistically... Like, I think blocking 6 damage seems really good. Especially given the fact that they can't. Um, do anything back. This is interesting. I could discover. So how much mana does this cost? Four. I have four remaining, so I could I could do both. I think. I do not have enough to do both. I hate to see it. Well, in that case, I think we're gonna do this. Make this larger. Play a hidden volcano. Attack both of these. Um, I go up to 13. Oh, I didn't think about this super well, did I? Because now... Oh no, I think I just attacked myself into being dead. Uh, so what do I tap down? I can untap this, but they just tap it with the Iceberg Titan. As far as 10, 11, 12, no, I didn't just tap this down. If they want to double block, that's great for me. Yeah, I love that. Like that for me. That seems strong for me. It seems like a, a place that I want to be. Oh, 
they do have the discover land, so I guess there's that. But this casts the spell, right? So they can't actually attack if they do this. Okay, casts, right, so they can do that. So it enters the battlefield, right? So they can't attack me, which is nice. They can make another 4-4 four -four, though. So that's not great. Oh, the worst possible draw. No, they drew a flyer. <laughs> no, I could have tapped down the 2-2 two -two last turn to make them have to chump instead of you know, trade, but I actually think the trade was better for me. I don't know. It's possible that it wasn't. It's possible that was stupid. The cave-ins aren't even really outs here, unfortunately. Oh, crack this. Uh, doesn't really matter, but we'll grab a mountain. Benthosaur was on top. No, my Benthosaur, I need that. I needed that Benthosaur. So I go up to 16. Sacrifice the hidden cataract. We'll cry ourselves to sleep because of the way that this got tapped. Oh boy. Now oh, attack. <laughs> Might as well attack. They go up to seven. Well, I'm pretty dead here. I gotta make a bat. I gotta make a bat, unfortunately. It's only one, but I gotta make it. I think I'm dead, actually. I think I'm just straight up dead. 11, yeah, I'm dead. Good game. Good game. Tough game, though. Tough game. Like, I don't think it was gonna be easy. Like, if I had, if I had tapped different, like, their Iceberg Titan uh, just ended up being to be, like, too much for me there and maybe it was winnable maybe it was a winnable game i don't know i don't think like it would have been tough it would have been tough to win but um you know what that's that's fine that's you know what it's an admirable the k the deck performed admirably and you know maybe it could have got there maybe it couldn't have but uh that's all for this time see you